In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can multiply or divide rational expressions. We already know to multiply or divide fractions. We simply, we start by dividing out common factors and then multiply across. However, in order to divide out common factors, this means we must first have factored each of the expressions, each of the polynomials. Now, division's exactly the same. We know with one extra step is we have to multiply by the reciprocal first. So let's see if we can do that to multiply the rational expressions x squared plus 3x plus 2 over 4x minus 12 times x squared minus 5x plus 6 over x squared minus 4. Starting with the numerator, we need to factor that first numerator. Well, we want to, because there's a 1 in front, multiply to 2 and add to 3. So we know we got x times x to get x squared. 2 times 1, if they're both positive, we'll multiply to 2 and add to 3. Over in the denominator, the first thing we always look for when factoring is the greatest common factor. This one does have a greatest common factor of 4, so we'll factor out the 4. Leaves us with x minus 3 times. Our next expression, I'm going to move the other problem out of the way here. Whoops. There we go. The next expression, x squared minus x plus 6. To get x squared at the beginning, it has to be x times x. And because we have that 1 in front of x squared, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to positive 6. Be careful of the signs here. And add to negative 5 going to be negative 2 and negative 3. A common error I see people do is 6 and 1. 6 and 1 would work if the 6 was negative, but negative 6 times positive 1 is negative 6, not positive 6. So be very careful with your signs. Over in the denominator, x squared minus 4, two terms. We're thinking tricks, and it's a difference of squares. So that's going to factor to the sum and difference of the square roots. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2. Notice as we did this, we saw lots of different types of factoring. A little guess and check, some GCFs, some tricks. These problems could use any of the factoring strategies that we saw in our factoring unit. So be very aware that any of those factoring strategies can come up. And it might be worth reviewing some of those if you bump into a few questions. But now that it's factored, all we have to do is identify the common factors and divide them out. You'll see there's an x minus 3. There's an x plus 2. There's an x minus 2. Dividing out of the numerator and denominator, all that we have left is x plus 1 in the numerator and 4 in the denominator. Let's take a look at another example. This example is a division problem. We know division just requires one extra step. Instead of division, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So the first rational expression stays the same, 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. And now we're multiplying by the reciprocal, the 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 8x over 6x squared plus x minus 1. Now we're ready to factor numerator, denominator, both fractions. To get the first fraction, first times first has to equal the first to get 3x squared, and that must be 3x times x. 2, we want it to be negative, so 1's positive, 1's negative. It might be 2 times 1. That gives us 3x and 2x. But remember, we said 1 has to be negative. 
one has to be negative. If one of them is negative, we'll never get 5x in the middle. So this doesn't work. Let's try switching the 2 and 1. Now we have 6x and 1x. And one of them has to be negative. So if we make it negative 1x and a positive 6x, then we do get the 5x in the middle. All right, now let's look at the denominator. Uh, to get x squared, it's x times x. And because that's a 1 in front, we want to multiply to 2 and add to 3. 2 plus 1 does that. So positive 2 and a positive 1. Times the second fraction. One thing you might notice about the second fraction in the numerator is we have a greatest common factor. Let's pull out the greatest common factor just right above it so we can look at it a little closer. 2, 6, and 8 are divisible by 2, and they also all have an x. Never lose track of that greatest common factor that always must be done first. When we pull out 2x, we're left with x squared minus 3x minus 4. So continuing to factor with the GCF of 2x out front, the x squared minus 3x minus 4, to get x squared, it has to be x times x. And because there's a 1, we want to multiply to negative 4, add negative 3. It's going to be 4 times 1 if the 4 is negative and the 1 is positive. Denominator now. No GCF, so we'll jump right into it. 6x squared, probably going to guess 3x times 2x. And the last times last has to be last. The only way to get 1 is 1 times 1, and they have different signs. One of them has to be negative. So on the outside, we've got 3x. On the inside, we have 2x. We want positive 1, so positive 3 minus 2. The inside is negative, the outside is positive. Big exercise in factoring. Once the factoring's done, it's easy from here. Looking for common factors, we see 3x minus 1 dividing out of the numerator and denominator. There's also an x plus 2 to divide out of the numerator and denominator. There's also an x plus 1 divides out of the numerator and denominator. With nothing else in common, our final answer in the numerator is 2x times x minus 4 all over 2x plus 1. I want to notice we can't divide out the 2x's because of the plus separating the 2x from the 1. So that's going to have to be it for our final solution. Multiplying and dividing fractions, factor everything, and divide out common factors.